I, I'm actually scared of country roads. I'm always convinced that some naked man with a chainsaw is going to jump out of that. I hate country roads. I'm not even really sure I like the country. I like the idea of the country. Like, I get all excited when someone invites me to their house upstate, which is the New York version of the desert, I guess. <laughs> like, yay, I'm going to a house upstate. Whee! And then I get there, and I have no idea what to do. Wow. Oh, look at all your mid-century furniture. Cool. Um, oh, I love your garden. Are those daisies? That's so 60s. Oh, big stone fireplace. Cool. Can we go home now? Um, see, I love to walk. I'm kind of the Diana Nyad of walking. Uh, but I'm scared of country roads. So then I become, I become that annoying house guest who has to be walked, like a pesky schnauzer. Like, Can we go for a walk now? Who wants to go for a walk? Ready to go for a walk now? Stay sweet now. You had to live through this this morning. She had to walk me. Um, now everyone's trying to read and relax. And I'm just pacing around like a horny tweaker. <laughs> Um, I'm actually, I'm a city person. Um, if agoraphobia is the fear of crowds, I have solophobia, which is the fear of being surrounded by less than 8 million people. <laughs> and I hate to drive, so New York is really the only place I can live. But um, I had this horrible experience once. It was probably like, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. It was, um, <laughs> kind of hard to talk about, but it was me, so I need to get it out. I lived in Hawaii for eight years. Ah! Oh! 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 It was terrible. Um, That's what I knew you would Oh! God. Um, I still have this Hawaii driver's license. With, you know, stupid tropical colors and dumb <laughs> And sometimes I have to hand it to someone for ID. And they'll go, ooh, you live in Hawaii. You're so lucky. And I go, no, it sucks. It's awful. I hate it. <laughs> I probably couldn't live there. Um, I still, I don't even know how this happened. Uh, I never meant to leave New York. Um, there was a man involved, some children, it's all very disturbing and confusing. I'm still kind of coming to terms with it. Um, I'm thinking maybe I need to like write a book or go on some morning talk shows like Elizabeth Smart or Amanda Berry. Um, no, I'm not comparing my situation to theirs. <laughs> Mine was worse. Uh, I had to leave New York. They were already stuck in like Utah. <laughs> for longer than like five days for the Mai Tai in front of the Hilton. Um, you suck. <laughs> oh, I do. Thank you. I wrote things down over here. <laughs> but, okay, let me tell you. Men love living in Hawaii. It makes them feel like pirates. Arr. They can go to work in like this tiki print shirt and flip-flops. And, uh, you know, they're very happy, but then there are all these miserable wives who just want to be able to go to a museum or leave the house without SPF 50. But the men love it. They're Robinson Crusoe. They're Peter Pan, and they just want to fuck that Never Never Island. <laughs> Maui was my Camilla Parker Bowles, the tanned, wrinkled cunt destroying my marriage. <laughs>
the days would come, but they hadn't seen any of the movies unless it was like oh, a documentary oh, about India. I know! Oh my god! Dude. No, they have no, they don't bitch, they have no edge. Oh, they, they couldn't have cared less how ugly, like, Julia Roberts' dress was. Uh, and I'm like, I can't make witty Oscar night banter. who are at this point only like 127th actual Hawaiian. But they're really into Hawaiian culture. They do hula. They play the ukulele. They cook meth. This is a big cottage industry. Or I guess I should say Ohana industry because they really love their, their native language. Their seven letter native language. Separatists who were kind of like beachfront Basques, and they drive around in their trucks with Hawaiian flags and these bumper stickers that would say, you know, uh, grown here, not flown here. <laughs> Aloha, now go home. And I'd be like, I want to! Talk to him! <laughs> but then, the worst are the spiritual people. <laughs> They're all escaping their former lives as secretaries and bigamists. <laughs> and they descend on Mother Maui with their damaged psyches to worship the goddess Pele. <laughs> the first thing they do when they get there is they change their name to sea urchin or papaya. <laughs> it's like the Waikiki Witness Protection Program. <laughs> uh, I wound up running into this... Um, this 80s hustler I knew, who had, uh, he dated Barry Diller and David Geffen, who I guess are the Johns that every 80s hustler needs to have on their resume. <laughs> and his name was Gavin, but he changed it to Sankara, moved to Maui to follow his guru, who promptly left the minute he got there, leaving him stranded with six cats and a stupid spiritual name. But, so I was like, um, you know, I'd known him as Gavin. I'm like, so I can keep calling you Gavin, right? And he was like, I prefer you call me Sankara. <laughs> I'm sure you all have those friends, you know, you've always called Cookie, and then all of a sudden they get a big corporate job, Cookie. and they want to be known as Elizabeth. <laughs> names. Like, when your friend Michael suddenly wants to be called Namaste or Dancing Panda. And he's kind of a dick anyway. I mean, I don't mind drag names. I love drag names. I don't call anyone by their drag names. Drag names are fun. I need a cocktail. I want a handbag. I leaned over. I mean, you can even come up with a spiritual drag name, like Sandy Scrit or Dolly Lama. <laughs> but anyway, so um, <laughs> after thinking, I'm so glad you came back. I was really glad. I thought you were Hawaiian or something. Like that. <laughs> um, my time. I, I'm not forgetting my lines. <laughs>
David Geffen. Elizabeth.